Hi, I'm Turbo and this is part four of my four-part guide on how to bend parts and overclock in PC Building Simulator. Finally, we're on to overclocking. I'd like to add a disclaimer here. Please do not use this as a guide to overclocking PCs in real life. If you threw some of these numbers at real components, they'd instantly dissolve into ash. So, this is the one process this is a, that is the same whether you're doing it in free build or career. So I'm just going to show you how to do this on the new rig I put together in free build over the last few days. Before we get started, I highly recommend you save a, make a backup of your save if you're doing this in free build. If you accidentally dial in 1.95 volts on your RAM that you spent hours bidding for, you're going to have a bad time. I'd like to make a few quick notes on a couple of changes as well. A big shout out to TOF3 for realizing that we can get away with only using three radiators with the best GPUs. This, is, this allows us to replace one rad with a fan and push our CPU a bit harder. This also allows us to up our usable RAM clock to 6048 MHz instead of the 6030 MHz I mentioned in Part 3. I made a note of this on the guide. Okay, let's start by going over our final OC rig build one more time. As you can see, we're running the EVGA DG series case with three 140mm fans. We've got five QF140 fans. Power is handled by the EVGA 1600 watt PSU. However, you can run as little as 1300 watts right now, so if you'd like to use a different PSU that runs that, that's fine. Um, the board is the Rampage 6 Extreme with a Corsair MP500 in the M.2 slot. And of course, for the core components that we've spent so much time binning, we've got two water-cooled 1080 Ti's, we've got four sticks of the A-Data Z1 4600 RAM, and uh, Intel 7980 XE with a Silverstone HEO1 cooler. Um, and of course, uh, you can see that I've made my loop here uh, all nice and fancy and everything. You don't need to do that. You can run just the, the default soft tubing and, and configure it whichever way you want. I just do this because I'm picky. Okay, so let's take a look at an actual score here real quick so we can make an observation. As you can see, our score is very heavily weighted towards the GPU side of things. This is important because, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we're getting the absolute maximum possible overclock on our GPUs. In other words, we don't want to start by overclocking our CPU because that will raise case temps and hurt our GPU temps, which will then prevent us from reaching those peak GPU clocks. So let's start by loading into the BIOS and doing a factory reset. We can now load into the OS and get started on our GPUs. Okay, let's open OCCT and GPU Tuner. Um, so of course, we want to max out our core voltage. Uh, assuming you took the time to get some truly spectacular GPUs, we're going to be dealing with power limits instead of thermal limits. Though we do get close to thermal li limits, which is 95.5 degrees C for the GPUs if you're curious. Uh, one of the things we want to do is keep our core clock and memory clock sliders fairly even. We do this because once you get past a certain point on these sliders, the cards start to require way more power for each additional megahertz. By keep them, keeping them even, we're able, we're able to push them harder without getting into these extremes nearly as much. So we'll start off here looking at our temps. Uh, we know we're going to run into power limits before we hit thermal throttle, but observing temperatures is much quicker than waiting for this power draw to come all the way up. So we'll dial in an initial OC. Our binning test numbers are a good place to start. And then we'll turn on infinite OC and we'll see where our temperatures are at. Alright, so it looks like we got a bit of ways to go, so we'll dial in a little bit more. Alright, we've still got some room, so we'll make another jump about that same size again. Okay, we're really close now. We're within a few degrees of the thermal throttle limit, so we know we've got to be getting close to our power limit. Uh, so now what I like to do here is, instead of big jumps, I like to do these about 5 megahertz at a time. So what I'll do is I'll dial in 5 on the first one, and I'll hit apply. And if it's stable, I go on to the next one. I play another 5, and hit apply. And then I just keep doing that back and forth until I blue screen. Alright, and it looks like a blue screen, so we'll power off. 
and get back in. Open up OCCT and GPU tuner again. And then I will back off by 5 on this offending clock. We'll hit apply and then we'll restart our OCCT infinite. And once that gets started, then we'll go up by 1 on this clock. And we'll just do that until we blue screen again. Oh, okay. So we have that there and we have reached a limit. We now know that we can't increase either clock again without blue screening. So what I do now, now that I've found a limit, I know it's a limit, but I don't know that it's the best limit. So what I'll start to do now is I'll start backing off one clock and adding to another. I'll go back and forth on this as many times as I need to, just making sure that I always gain more than I lose. And this is where that power limit, what I was talking about, where each megahertz requires more and more each time. Um, for example, if I back off by 2 on this one, I should be able to go up by 3 or 4 on this one and still be stable. So, and as we can see, we are now stable. So, and that's because I was pushing the core clock a little bit too hard. So, I was up too high on this, and that uh, the power and the temperature requirement for each megahertz on this started to go way up. So, I'll just continue to do this until I can find my best clocks. Okay, so I want to make a special note here real quick of something that I observed on a couple of cards in career mode. I had an instance where I could do two different options of gain and loss between the core and the memory clock. So I could either back off two on the memory clock and gain three on the core clock, or I could back off three on the memory clock and gain four on the core clock. And from my observations, it looks like the core clock um, is weighted just a little bit heavier than the memory clock. Uh, of course, the best way to observe this is to go in and run 3D Mark every time you run into an instant like this where you've got two different options of gain loss. Um, but I just wanted to make a note of that real quick so you would know what happened if you ran into it. Okay, so it looks like we found our best possible GPU clocks. One thing that we need to do at this point is restart the PC. We need to do this because there is currently a bug with OCCT that can occasionally crop up. This bug essentially bypasses the temperature and power limits and allows you to just go nuts. So we need to restart the PC to make sure that didn't happen so our score is legal. Alright, it looks like we're good. So we can move on to CPU overclocking now. Uh, let's leave all our GPU settings as they are, and then we'll go figure out what our CPU maximum is. Alright, let's load into the BIOS. And then we're going to head into RAM OC, turn our RAM voltage up so it's out of the way and we don't have to worry about it again, and then we'll go ahead and dial in uh, 1.75 on the voltage for the CPU. You probably won't ever need that much, but it's nice to have it there just in case. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find our CPU thermal limits. So to do this, we're going to just dial in, uh, let's say, 4.5 gigahertz. Um, and just for those that are curious, the CPU thermal limit is 100.5 degrees C. Alright, so we'll apply this 4.5 gigahertz, we'll restart, and we'll head into OCCT, and we'll test it, and we'll see if we'll throttle. Okay, so we are throttling, so that is too much, so we'll head into our handy-dandy spreadsheet again, and we'll note that, and we'll restart, head back into the BIOS, 
And the way that I like to do this is just so I'm not going all the way down to 4400 is I'll go down one on the ratio and then one up one on the base clock and that gets me a little bit closer to what I was just at. So apply changes and restart. And we'll test to see if it throttles. Okay, and it looks like it doesn't, so we'll make a note of that. And now we have a range to start testing between, just like we did on our RAM in part three. And we'll just narrow this down until we find the best no throttle clock. Okay, so it looks like the best I can do without thermal throttling is 4.484 gigahertz. Now we can go play around a bit more, but this time we're going to add RAM into the mix. So, let's boot back into the BIOS. And we are going to crank this up to 144. And turn ramp speed all the way up just like we did in oops, there we go just like we did in the RAM video alright and so now we'll go in and we're gonna turn this down until we find the maximum value that is under our maximum possible value without throttle so it looks like that's gonna be 4464 with a RAM value of 6048 so we'll go back into this and we'll make a note of the bus where that was at and then let's see what was this 4464 and 6048 and you'll notice that I'm noting these CPU values in megahertz I'll show you why here in just a little bit alright so now we're gonna go back over here and what we're gonna do is we're going to go up one on the ratio and then we're gonna turn down the base clock until we come back down below that value. So it looks like 4480 and 5880. What was that bus at? 140. All right, and then we'll come back in. We'll go down one on the RAM voltage, and then we'll turn the base clock up to just below our RAM limit. So let's see, 6034 and 4380 at 146. And you just keep doing that until you finish with the entirety of the RAM range.
Alright, so we have our numbers. At the moment, it seems that the game weights, CPU speed, and RAM speed about the same. So you want to have the highest possible value between the two. This is why I used megahertz for both of these. Because now we can just go through and set up a simple formula in our spreadsheet to do this math for us. So basically what I did is I just used the first one as my main one and then I set up a difference formula to go in and subtract all of these from this one. If we have a negative number that means we have a worse combination and a positive number if we had one would mean it would be a better combination. Uh, at the moment it looks like the best combination is that first one at the 144 megahertz so that is what we'll go with. So let's load it up and run 3D Mark. All right, so we have our 3D Mark score. Um, now, before we end, I'd like to go over a few of the things that we need to see if you try submitting a score to the highest 3D Mark score thread. Um, we need to see this score, of course, but we also need to see OCCT and GT GPU tuner, as well as your RAM speed from System Info. Now, if you open up System Info and you scroll all the way down on the right-hand side, you'll see memory clock speed here. And the way that I do this is I'll just tuck this down here like this and put that over it. We'll minimize this for the moment. And this is usually where I keep GPU tuner. And so then what I'll do is I'll scroll down just a little bit. And I move this over a little bit so you can see all these numbers down here. And then I'll put GPU tuner over that. And then you've got all this info you need on one screen. Okay, so the last thing that you need to do is an OCCT, you need to run a test to make sure it's stable. You don't have to do the infinite one, the automatic one will work, um, but I like to do the infinite one and let it run for long enough to get this power draw up. And that is it, folks. You now know how we overclockers manage the scores we do. Hopefully you've now got yourselves a rig that's up there with the best of us and can give us a little more competition. We have the re career refresh on the horizon as well as RTX, so we'll most likely end up making new videos when all that hits, especially if the career refresh changes up how overclocking works. I hope you all enjoyed this series and learned something new along the way. Happy PC building!